Today we're in Sheboygan County visiting the Blind Horse Restaurant and Winery in Kohler, Wisconsin. Come with us and discover some fantastic wines. What makes the Blind Horse so successful? In the true equine story explaining the name. I'm Lord Shelby, your Wisconsin wine guy, and you're watching Wisconsin Wine Talk. What a beautiful winery. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad that I chose my home winery for episode one of the Wisconsin Wine Talk. I'm going to introduce you to one of the key players here at the Blind Horse Winery and Restaurant. Thomas Nye. Shell. Oh, how are you? Oh, man. How are you doing, man? Doing great. Doing great. Let me say this on behalf of myself and the crew. Thank you very much for having us here and giving us an inside scoop or inside look at your lovely winery here. Well, we appreciate you being here. You're actually one of the first people I met when I came to the state to, to help launch this venture. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah, this is a full circle here. So it's great to see you. Thank you. So for, I did a little research, Tom. For those who don't know, all right, about myself, I'm originally from California, so I'm a California boy, you know, so I'm still adjusting to this winter climate here. After, all, after 21 years, <laughs> I'm still adjusting. But I did some research and discovered that, you know, we have a little connection here. Yeah, I've got some thin blood as well. Yeah. I'm from California as well, and I, I'm glad to hear that eventually I may adjust. That's you, good. You may adjust. <laughs> so let's get a shot of this right now. Take a look. This is California, California Wisconsin. Hangers. There you yeah. go. All right. So, Tom, tell us about you and who you are and what you do here at the Blind Horse Winery. Sure, so I'm the general manager of the Blind Horse Restaurant and Winery, mm -hmm. but my, the best part of my job is I'm the winemaker as well. Um, that is what my background is. I, uh, my wife and I had a winery in New Jersey where <laughs> I spent a number of years as well. We started a winery out there and we sold that to come out here to Wisconsin and help the molars launch their, their property here. What does a Blind Horse offer for visitors to the area? So, you know, it is a really unique business. Okay. We are essentially running three separate businesses here on the property, okay? So, yeah, three, because one wasn't enough. Right. This so, is number one. <laughs> this is number one, our beautiful restaurant, okay. um, which is up front. And to me, the, the opportunity to bring food and wine together was an absolute, uh, well, that, that was what drew me okay. to okay. This, this project. Mm -hmm. The second piece is, of course, yeah, number two, <laughs> is, of course, our winery, which okay. is a commercial uh, commercial winery where we're uh, producing wine and selling wine. And business number three is our live entertainment piece. Ooh, wow. And, you know, we have a, a patio where we have live entertainment. We have these huge festivals. Uh, we do a lot of corporate events. So there's this kind of, it's an interesting business. We really are such a, a dynamic property. Mm -hmm. But what brings it all together, it really, what's so great, and this is so rare, people don't realize, I don't think people in the area realize how lucky they are to have a restaurant and a winery on the same property. That's rare in even Napa. Yes. There, it is very, there are very few places across the country where you can get this mm -hmm. on the same property with a live music venue, yes. which, yeah. by the way, you know, this patio is kind of like another restaurant. I love a challenge. I like mm -hmm. a diverse challenge. Okay. Uh, you know, bringing all of this together to really come into our own. We're going into year, I guess, uh, four now with oh, the winery wow. open. Uh, it's really starting to come together. And it, it, it hasn't been seamless. I'm glad it seems that mm -hmm. way. But, you know, we have such a great staff. It has come together. We kind of have gotten our feet underneath us. We have the right people mm -hmm. to really grow this thing. And we're excited. We feel like we're at the point of explosion okay. right now. Okay. And, you know, I think what we really wanted to do was to become the it place okay. in Wisconsin. Okay. And I believe we're achieving that. Oh, beautiful. Um, so it's only up from here. We're, we're excited. All right. So, Tom, tell us about the production. I mean, is, is, uh, how much do you produce? What grapes, et cetera? So, you know, our concept was a little bit different. Okay. okay? So we wanted to really explore the micro winery concept. So okay. you've heard of a micro brewery. Yes. You've heard of micro distilleries. We're really a micro winery in that we developed, we, we actually identified a style of wines okay. that we wanted to make. And we sourced the best grapes possible to make those types of wines. Okay. So our initial focus was we want to make really good dry wines. Okay. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to make our name on. That's what we want to become known as. And that was a real risk when we opened. You know, there are yeah. 100, over 100 wineries in the state of Wisconsin, and, you know, 99 of them produce all sweet wines. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. you know, we were really taking a risk in, in that model. 
we've somewhat adjusted since then. We mm -hmm. still get a lot of our fruit from uh, California mm -hmm. and Washington State to, mm -hmm. to support that dry style okay. of the winery. Really, our, our focus right now is to produce the best wines we can, dry or sweet, and we do make sweet wines, but they're, they're done differently. And again, okay. as we try some of these, we can talk about that in, in terms of how we do it. You heard him. He said, as we try some of these. <laughs> so we got a setup or something? Yeah, we have something upstairs. You oh. want to try some wines? Beautiful. Let's All do right, it. Let's drink. Let's get an understanding of Tom, the winemaker, and these wines. So this, this is all you, Tom. Take us through it. Great. You know, so my philosophy on my winemaking is, is pretty simple, actually. It's natural winemaking, okay. okay? So we don't over-manipulate the wines. And when I say that, you know, a lot of the industry today is so over-manipulated. Okay. I agree with that. What we, my philosophy is to alter the wines by blending or um, the aging process. So it's a minimalistic approach, okay. but it, it, it stars the fruit. Okay. So uh, it really is evident, I think, when you taste it. And I'll kind of step you through each one and tell you what my thoughts were as we aged okay. and made all of these wines. So the first wine is, we call it this our Pinot Gris. And- Oh, wait a minute, Tom. I'm a little inexperienced. You have to walk me through this process. <laughs> <laughs> the swirling process. So, okay. The reason why we do this is to uh, oxygenate the wine, okay. and oxygen will bring out uh, the fruit flavors uh, of the wine. So oxygen, when you're aging wine, is the enemy, but when you're drinking it, it is your best friend. Mm. So a lot of uh, tangerine on the nose, mm. um, a little apple, uh, pineapple. This is a Pinot Gris that is slightly sweetened. So, you know, we do make sweet sweet wines here, mm -hmm. but I think what you'll taste from this, this is my style of sweetness, which is it's delicately, delicately done. Yes. It's not sweet to be sweet. It's sweet to enhance it. Yeah. And this level of sweetness, which is maybe 1%, mm -hmm. maybe 1.2% residual sugar, very little, but boy, this wine is so full. It's sort of what I like to call is, it's just enough of that sweetness to accentuate the fruit. The fruity qualities of the wine, you know, up front, you know, I, I like that. But what I like most about it is you don't take away the acidity, the brightness, the freshness, you know, which is which is fantastic here in this wine. So what's, what's next on the list here? So this next wine, this one's, you know, again, this is what makes us unique. When I describe being like a micro distillery, uh, mm -hmm. like you know, like a micro winery. Okay. What makes us unique is I can do anything mm -hmm. I want. That's what's beautiful, right? Yeah. So this is a blend of Walla Walla. Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. And Susun Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, wow. So every year I make both. And alone, if I made those, they weren't, they're, they're good, mm -hmm. but they're, each one is lacking something. Okay. When we blend this together, and every year it's a little bit different, this oh. one happens to be a 50 50 blend. Okay. It is amazing. And this, two years in a row, we've, we've produced this in this style with this blend. I tell you, it is absolutely beautiful. So it's part Washington State and part California. And I tell you, so I I'm going to taste this first, mm -hmm. you know, and then as I'm tasting, maybe you can walk us through and tell us what each area gave to the wine. Sure. Okay. So, do you pick up the grapefruit on here? It kind of has a lot of that classic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. grapefruit New Zealand. Flavor. I got that on the nose right away. So that comes from Susun Valley. It is just really a grapefruit bomb. And mm. when I say grapefruit, we're not, a lot of people confuse, we're not adding grapefruit juice, obviously, mm -hmm, to the wine. Mm -hmm. That is a characteristic you just pick up by uh, analyzing and evaluating the mm -hmm. wine. And Susun Valley, this vineyard we pull from, it is all grapefruit. In fact, it's too much to my liking. <laughs> now, a lot of people love that style of mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, but it's, it's a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. What we get from Washington State brings a softness oh. and kind of a creaminess to it. So, the I was, balance. I was waiting for it. I was waiting. It's like right in my mid like, oh my God. You get the grapefruit intensity, and it's like. So, what do we have next on the list? All right. So, our next wine is our Tuscan blend. So, you know, when I had my winery in New Jersey, the Tuscan blend was always the most popular. And I always thought because we have, of course, a lot of Italians in, mm -hmm. in New Jersey. So, that's got to be the reason why. It's a Sangiovese based wine. Okay. And, of course, this has become our number one wine here in Wisconsin, of all okay. places. So, who would know? <laughs> who would have thought? Who would have thought a dry red Italian <laughs> varietal <laughs> would be our number one selling wine? But that is exactly what has happened. It is so popular. And, and I'll tell you why. Because Sangiovese is such a versatile grape. Mm -hmm. You can 
drink it any time with yeah. any food. It is a great starter wine, but yet it's got enough to it that'll hold up to any meal that you do. It is a versatile, versatile wine. It's great entry level for people that are just starting to get into reds, mm -hmm. but yet if you love reds and you like a little body in mm -hmm. your wine, it's got enough to hold you. Wow. It's a neat, neat wine. I think that's why in, in both New Jersey and in Wisconsin, uh, surprisingly, it is our number one seller. So, so, so let me interpret. For those who are watching, remember the old Italian wine with the little basket on the bottom of the bottle? Let's rank that up a few levels, okay? So San Diavese, you know, here we have a wine, you know, not really entry level, but amped up to be more, more eloquent, more robust. Now you mentioned a Tuscan blend. Most of us may not even know what a Tuscan blend is. So what do you mean by Tuscan blend? So we define it. So Tuscan blend is kind of our own thing. Okay. Uh, and for us, it means that the majority, and we change the blend every year, but okay. the majority of it will be Sangiovese. There'll always be a little Cabernet, mm -hmm. Merlot, Petite Syrah, mm -hmm. and some years a little Cab Franc, some years Syrah. So every year is different. It's never the same every year, but it's the same formula we start with. And then we, as we taste it and we make blends into it, like tonight, the blending party we're mm -hmm. doing for our new Tuscan blend. It always starts with the same blend every year when we crush the grapes, but it's always changed as it ages. Again, not to try to make the same exact wine as last year, yes. to make the best wine we can that oh. year. Okay, what do we have next? So this next one is really interesting. So uh, we wanted to make a new blend, and okay. so we were experimenting with some uh, Zinfandel and Petite Syrah blends. We call this our Black Gypsy. Um, now, when I first bottled this, you know, we went through, gosh, we must have gone through 15, 20 trials before we finally came to the final blend. By the time it got to the bottle, um, it wasn't quite right yet, but mm -hmm. people loved it. So I just mm -hmm. didn't say anything, but it wasn't right yet, <laughs> okay. you know? It just turned about a month ago, and just, so the alcohol's pretty high in the Zinfandel. So it almost tasted sweet on the back end. This is a completely dry wine. Mm -hmm. So it was a little sweet on the back end. So that's what I was worried about when we first okay. bottled it. Well, what happened is that Zinfandel finally mellowed. Okay. So the sweetness went away and it completely made this a smooth, beautiful wine. It is really nice. I'm so proud of where this wine ended up wow. given some of the concerns. It is a high alcohol wine. You mm -hmm. are, you're you're getting a lot of that out of California these days. There's nothing I can do about it. So you're telling me one bottle, I'm good. One bottle and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> now here, here's a little insight. Now, I like what you said about it just wasn't right yet, but you wanted to push to the limits, you wanted to give it some time. That's, he's talking like a chef. Being a retired chef, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, would it be wrong to say I'm in love with this guy, <laughs> you know? But that's what I'm talking about. You know, a guy, a, a, a winemaker has so much passion. It was delicious, my friend. Thank you very much. Oh my God! Hey, Sam, Sandy. how you doing? Oh, I'm I'm great. I just finished having this wonderful wine tasting with Tom. He took me through all the wines. It was great. It was fantastic. You know. So wait, wait a minute. Let's back this up. Yeah. This is Sandy. Sandy, why don't you tell the people who you are and what you do here? Sure. My name is Sandy Lesky. I'm the marketing director for the property and uh, chief fun officer. So your fun is not done. Oh. I'm going to steal you away from Tom and I'm going to take you on a tour of this beautiful property and give you the whole blind horse experience and probably give you some more wine along the way. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You ready? Uh, I'm ready. All so right. follow us while she takes us on the tour. Looking forward to this. Let's go. All right. This is an old rustic barn that has been on this property. I, I can't tell you for sure since the beginning okay. of the property, but I know that this barn has been here for well over 150 years. Smaller groups, 25 to 30, okay. can come in here and have their own private building and have you know restaurant service, bar nice. service in here. I was kind of alluding to this earlier. They kept saying, Tom kept saying to me that, you know, you hear about that later, hear about that later. So tell me about the blind horse, the name, and what is it about this, the story about a horse? As our owners were digging through the history of this property, okay. they discovered that, oh my gosh, there was this blind oh, wow. horse that was, you know, the family favorite mm -hmm. of the family in the 1800s. And that horse's name was Birdie. You see around this property, we do our best to keep a lot of the history alive today and we managed to do that also through the name as a dedication to the the past the beautiful past and history and we continue that through in the naming of our wines um, the one and only sweet red wine that we have that we will ever have 
his name Birdie's White. Oh, and then nice. we later added a Birdie's White. That was our first wine that we blended some Wisconsin grapes into. Nice. So we have a Birdie's Red and a Birdie's White. And if you look closely at our labels, you'll notice that there's Braille on oh. each one of our labels on our wine bottles too. We are in our beautiful restaurant. Okay. It's a cozy little bar where we- I like that. We, cozy. It is so cozy, so casual, so laid back. Do you guys make any uh, cocktails with your wine? We do now. Ooh. Now that we have our ice wine, Okay. as most people know, ice wine is a, it's a sweeter, a little bit thicker okay. wine. Right, it's more of a dessert wine that you would sip, but it is also a great wine to make martinis out of. So yes, now that we have our ice wine, we do have ice wine martinis in here, and our fabulous mixologists have come up with amazing recipes. So we have a bourbon one, we have a gin one, and we have a vodka one. Our total seating in this restaurant is about seventy people. We do have a downstairs area too. In the summer, we have a trellis area attached to the outside of this house that folks can, you know, sit okay. in the trellis in the summer and listen to the creek or live music we might have going on on our larger patio that night. So a lot of opportunity for people to, to eat, drink, and live. We're still in the restaurant right okay. now, but we're in the lower level of the restaurant. Um, you had asked me earlier when we were in the granary about, you know, event space. Right. and. Um, the granary isn't the only answer we have to people that want to, to gather and celebrate. Okay, okay. Um, we have this space here in the restaurant. We are currently in what we call the cellar room, okay. a beautiful private room here in our restaurant surrounded by a variety of different you know, wine bottles on a, you know, an old barn wooden table here. Um, you know, this is a great room for groups six to 10 people. It's a different side to the restaurant where mm -hmm. you mentioned upstairs earlier that, oh, it's kind of airy and, right. and light up here. It's a little bit darker and more rustic oh, down like here. This. Yeah. I like this. It's, 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 it's very, again, cozy is the word I use upstairs, but here is a little bit more romantic. If you had to choose for our viewers yeah. two annual events mm -hmm. that they must attend, mm -hmm. what would they be? One of our food truck festivals and our harvest festival because they're both so unique. This property absolutely transforms Ooh. once May comes around. So you have the food truck festival and there's a, well, once or twice a year? Twice, in May and July. In May and July, and then there's the harvest festival that takes place. In September. In September. Great. I have to make sure I'm here. Who knows? Wisconsin wine guy, maybe shoot some footage. We never know. That would be, I'd love to see a stomp in the grape shell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, res I'll reserve a spot for you. <laughs> and I'll even put a little white t-shirt out that oh. says, eat, drink, stomp. And you can step out of your grape tub oh. and put your little grapey footprints How right cool on the back that? of that shirt. <laughs> it's a date. It's a date. Sounds good. I have a surprise for you. I like surprises. Oh, wow, they're pretty excited about this. I don't even know. Here's something you did, did not know. I like to do what's called a wine and food pairing challenge. In fact, to be more specific, I would like for you to select one white, one red wine to be paired with a Wisconsin cheese. I have the cheese and I have the cheese, so we are going to be pairing the Hennings Wisconsin, Hennings, Wisconsin cheese located in Kill, Wisconsin, and this is their sun-dried tomato and basil cheese. So here we go. So you get a chance to taste the cheese, all of us, and then you select the wines that you think will go best with this cheese. All Great. Right. There you go. All right. Then you can set the Tom, don't eat all the cheese. Okay. <laughs> so you do have to smell it as well because that's mm -hmm. part of the experience. You can pick up a little bit of the sun-dried tomato. Mm -hmm. For our white wine, why don't we try... I'd say the Pinot Gris. I think the Pinot Gris is a good idea. Oh. I think because there's a you know, slight sweetness to the Pinot Gris, it'll kind of go in with the creaminess of the cheese. Right. I think it'll bring it all together. So let's try that as our white match. Bite of the cheese. Some of the wine. It's really nice, it's the finish on this. 
really, it comes together, this creaminess factor comes together at the end and really just makes them both better. They're both great on their own, but at the end, that's what you want with a food and wine pairing. You're either looking to cr contrast the flavors to bring them together or to complement them. This is a compliment. I think this is, a, this is a good wine, a good pairing. Yeah, I think this works. I think we have a winner. I think it's a great match. Beautiful. Salud. Thank you. All right. Wine number two, the red. Okay, so Sandy, what I was thinking on this one is this has a lot of classic Italian flavors in the cheese with the tomato and the basil. I think we ought to try our classic Tuscan blend with this. That seems to make sense. The Tuscan is a Sangiovese blend. In this particular case, we have Sangiovese, Merlot, Cabernet, and a little Petit Syrah. This didn't have the creaminess come together like it did with the last wine, but what, what's great about this is all the different flavors that happen through this. You can really, all the way from the beginning, all the way through mid-palate to the end, really go through all these different layers till you get to the end. This is really nice. It was like, okay, wow, this is a good wine, a lot of flavor, a lot of complexities going on here. But as soon as I had it with the cheese, it was like, woof. So, and again, you start playing on the tomatoes, start playing on the basil, you know, we go with the whole Italian thing. In fact, I was thinking myself, okay, this is an easy one, just go Italian. But because of the blends that exist in this particular wine here, I thought it did great. Fantastic. So again, another perfect pairing. Salute. Thank you very much. Wow, what a, what a beautiful, lovely day it was for me here at the Blind Horse Winery. I had a fantastic tour, a tour that I definitely recommend that you come and take yourself. I want to thank Tom and Sandy for being such gracious hosts and the entire Blind Horse staff for the hospitality. I felt as though I went through a three-course meal. I had my appetizer of wines, you know, which was delicious to begin the day off with. Then I had my main course, that was that wine tasting that Tom took me through with the three different wines or four different wines. That was my entree, the main course. And now I'm going to finish my day with a delicious dessert wine. I'm going to be drinking on the 2016 uh, ice wine made here at the Blind Horse Winery. And it's made from a grape grown here in Wisconsin called St. Pepin. So let's see if I can remember the steps that Tom took me through. First is going to be the swirl, then the smell, and now for the taste. Oh my, that's delicious. Tropical apricot. My mouth is watering for the acidity, which is a sure sign of a very delicious wine and nicely balanced. I'm going to recommend that you must, this is a must try when you're visiting the winery. Also, when you empty that bottle, let's start a collection right now. Here's your collection for your candle holder with this beautiful bottle here, the Blind Horse Winery. So this is going right on my tables. Each time I'm drinking a Blind Horse wine or any wine, I'm going to have my Blind Horse ice wine bottle candle holder there. This is your Wisconsin wine guy leaving you with one last thought. There's lots of wine out there in the world, but here in Wisconsin, we make a unique wine for every palate. And as always, when selecting your wine for yourself to drink, always let your palate be the guide. Bye now.